Hello and welcome back to Matty's Tottenham blog and to another episode of Transfer Talk. Today we're going to be talking about the latest updates on Tottenham's pursuits of Milan Skriniar, uh, Antonio Rudiger, a new name that has been thrown into the mix, and as well the kind of standstill we've come to in uh, our pursuit of Arkadis Milik as well. Uh, look, if you're new to the channel and you do want more transfer videos like this, including interactive live streams, and as you can see at the top of the, the screen, we have giveaways, collaborations and charity live streams coming on the channel very, very soon. So if you want uh, to keep up to date with that, make sure to smash that subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you get notified uh, whenever I upload or go live. So to dive straight into things, we heard from Sky Sports last night that Tottenham, uh, Tottenham's pursuit of Milan Skriniar has been thrown into serious doubt and it is due to the, the big, big uh, discrepancy in the two clubs' valuation of the player. We heard quite a bit from Inter Milan, their sporting director and manager over the weekend, which I'll talk about again in a bit, but uh, this news, of course, coming from Sky Sports, who over this window haven't really been... Uh, they haven't been the first to many stories. They've they've been accurate, I suppose, but their their accuracy has uh, delayed how how fast they've been to stories like this. But they are, as far as I've seen, the only uh, uh, source that have come out with this news that Tottenham's uh, plan to sign Skriniar has been thrown into serious doubt, which is concerning definitely because I I do personally uh, find them a very reliable source, and I know a lot of people do. Um, so it, it is concerning they've said that. Now, the main source I've been looking to for transfers this summer, especially ones to do with, with players coming out of Italy, is, of course, Fabrizio Romano, who is the, he's the number one. He is spot on all of the time. Uh, and we haven't heard anything from him about this deal since last last Thursday or Friday when he said, essentially, the clubs are coming uh, pretty close uh, to a deal. Tottenham initially valued the player at about £30, £35 million. Pounds. Inter Milan wanted, I think it was €60 million, Euro, which is about £55 million. Pounds. Uh, so there's a big discrepancy there very early on. But sort of within a day, Fabrizio Romano claimed that uh, they could actually be close to agreeing a deal for in and around £45 million pounds with Tottenham, including add-ons and bonuses in that offer uh, to try and entice Inter Milan into accepting that. As far as Fabrizio Romano is concerned, it's gone very, very quiet on that front since the end of last week. And uh, he had said that we, we'd need to make a bid by Monday if we did want to have any chance of completing the signing. And again, judging from his silence, I, I don't think that bid was made yesterday. We heard from Inter Milan sporting director and manager Antonio Conte over the weekend uh, two very different uh, comments, very different opinions coming from the two of them. The sporting director said that uh, essentially Milan Skriniar is not available for sale. Uh, they already sold Diego Gadin to Cagliari this, this window. So it, it doesn't look as though he is willing to let Milan Skriniar go. But that, of course, could just be part of the negotiations. You know, just off the top of my head, if we're looking at our signings last summer, Tongi and Dambele uh, being the main one, the Leon president, John Michel Aulas, said very shortly before that deal was actually completed, that Ndombele wouldn't be going anywhere and I know it's, it's a thing that he personally does like to do would happen as well with uh, our signing of Hugo Lloris back in I think it was 2012 so that could definitely be just part of the negotiations from them but what Antonio Conte had to say was something very similar and that Skriniar is still part of their plans and they're, he's a player that they do want to keep a hold of but the fact that they're in a difficult financial situation at the moment it, it could force their hand and it could force them into negotiations and perhaps into selling the player uh, as far as Skriniar is, con is concerned, personally, it looks as though he does want this move. Um, you know, we've been talking quite a bit about the, the bid Inter Milan made for Tonki and Dombele earlier in the summer when they did include Milan Skriniar in a swap deal uh, for the midfielder, so that itself would indicate that the player does want to make the move because you, you wouldn't really expect Inter Milan to make an offer with the player if they weren't uh, sure that he would want to move to Spurs. So we're getting very different stories out of a lot of different places for this one, which is, is very confusing, but... Personally, I'm not as confident this deal can get over the line. Not not because of the story coming out of Sky Sports, but mainly because of the silence from people like Fabrizio Romano and even Gianluca Di Marzio, who also works for Sky Italy over the last uh, four or five days. So, if we're looking at our other centre back targets, you know, Ruben Diaz was he was identified as a target even before Milan Skriniar, and he looks set to join Manchester City now. It's it's all but officially confirmed. Uh, it's I think it's about sixty five million pounds they paid for him, which you can understand why Tottenham did not go for that deal if that's what Benfica were looking to to get for the centre back. Uh, and Tony Rudiger now has has uh, come out as a as another transfer target for Spurs. Uh, of course, a German centre back plays for Chelsea. There hasn't been a transfer between Tottenham and Chelsea since I think two thousand and eleven when when we signed Carlo Cudicini. But uh, Rudiger, he's he's a very different target to what we've had so far this summer. I, I spoke a bit about how Milan Skriniar, Ruben Diaz, and even Kim Min Jae, the South Korean defender for Beijing Guan, what they all had in common was they were they were ball playing centre backs. They were very comfortable in possession and were able to, to play out from the back, which, of course, Tottenham do like to do at times. Whereas Antonio Rudiger, is, is, he's not that type of player. He's, he's a quick, powerful centre-back, much more similar to Davinson Sanchez's style of play than Eric Dyer, who I thought we were looking to replace with the targets we've had already this summer. Uh, it, it's not a signing I'd like to see us make. It, it's a loan signing if, if we are going to get him. There's not much of a chance of him becoming a permanent one. I think we do have to ask why he's been out of Chelsea's team when it is players like Andreas Christensen, Kurt Zuma, 
uh, Thiago Silva who've been playing in centre back there. I know a few others whose names are eluding me at the moment, but I think the fact that he isn't getting into that Chelsea team, which does have a very very weak defence, I think we have to ask questions about that. But also even just the history between the player and Tottenham. We all know about the the accusations he made last year uh, when he accused Tottenham fans of racially abusing him, and after you know thorough investigations from. Uh, both the club and the, the Metropolitan Police, it was there was no evidence found to, to back up his accusations. So I think from a club's point of view, for, for us, it, it may be a moral issue if we are going to sign him, but as well, even from the player's point of view, if if he does believe that, uh, and I'm not trying to say that he, he was lying or anything like that, but if he believes that he was racially abused uh, by Tottenham fans, I, I don't see why he would want this move personally. Uh, there's some, some people claiming that this is a story put out by the Spurs for your team, uh, to Tusk, I was to say that look to tell Inter Milan basically if you don't sell sell to us, we we can go elsewhere because Inter Milan may need the money from this Grinier deal. So this this story from Sky Sports could all be part of the negotiations for Spurs to to get Milan Grinier. But on on the other hand, you do have to look at the financial side of this Grinier. As we said, could potentially cost us forty five million pounds uh, plus add ons and bonuses, which is is a huge deal for a centre back. Heard very early on in the summer that Tottenham weren't in a very good financial position going into this window. And that we would have to sell players before we sign them, and we haven't seen, we've only seen one departure, which of course Kyle Walker Peters to, to to Southampton for twelve million, and the money that we got for him, we spent that and more in the same day in in bringing Pierre Emil Hoybier to the club, so I think it's financially Rudiger is a much more viable option, and Skriniar I think was well, he was a stretch uh, from the beginning, but it looked for a bit there as though that deal was on and that we would sign him, but the, the setback we've had in the last week in terms of finances is of course the government's announcement that fans won't be allowed into the stadiums. For at least another six months now, I know there are, the football governing bodies are meeting about that this week to discuss the government's decision uh, to push back this uh, plan for fans to return to the stadium. But it's going to have a huge financial impact uh, on every single club. Of course, Tottenham, no exception to that. And I think that could be something that perhaps makes this a very disappointing end to uh, to the transfer in the forest. We do need a centre back. We do need a striker. Um, Arcadius Milik kind of been the the target that hasn't gone away for us this summer. The latest we heard on that is that. After he turned down and moved to Roma last week, Napoli actually offered him to Spurs. And there are a number of other targets that we do have. You know, Vout Veghorst, uh, Twitter, getting in a bit of a frenzy today after he followed uh, Spurs, Jose Mourinho and the Premier League on Instagram. So fans are kind of optimistic about that one now. But Akadis Milik, I think, is uh, a very good target for us. And Veghorst, in, in a similar boat, they both scored, I think, 16 or 17 goals last season. But it, could, it just could come down to the finances of it. And Milik looking to be about €25 million, Euro, which is the deal that Napoli had agreed with Roma before the player himself turned down that move to uh, to Rome. So it's it's going to be a very interesting end to the window, there's no doubt about that. Um, whether it'll be the exciting one that we were looking for, uh, it, it, only time will tell, of course, the financial impact of all this could be detrimental to our to our plans to sign a centre-back and a striker, but there's no doubt that we do need them, especially now with Son picking up this injury. Mourinho, you know, like openly saying, it's not going to be the, the last injury that we do suffer. We're, we're going to get more. Playing Chelsea tonight... Uh, uh, Maccabi Haifa on, on Thursday and then United on Sunday and the hectic calendar only only continues from there so we'll have to wait and see what goes on for the rest of this window but uh, look as I said as I always say uh, make sure to leave down in the comments below your opinions on this the potential uh, falling through of this deal for Milan Skriniar or links to Antonio Rudiger and of course our pursuit of a striker uh, if you have enjoyed this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up and if you are new to the channel and as I said you want more of these videos plus live streams, a big deadline day live stream uh, next week, giveaways, collaborations, and of course that charity stream. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload or go live. And as always, thanks for watching.